Somewhere along the way, apparently, I got this reputation that I didn't particularly like Daniel Bryan and that I enjoy crapping on Daniel Bryan and his fans. While it's true at times, I do enjoy mocking Daniel Bryan's fans because, frankly, you deserve it. I don't understand where I got this reputation or kind of this aura of being anti-Daniel Bryan or a Daniel Bryan hater. Let's clear the air on this right now. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Daniel Bryan. Here's a guy that's paid his dues. Here's a guy that's worked his ass off and fought his way to the pinnacle of the business, the very top of the top. He proved me and a lot of people wrong by showing that he could be the main event of WrestleMania. And he earned it. Got himself to a point where he was over as anybody in the freaking company. Just because I don't flip for every one of his flips, and I don't wig out for every one of his kicks, doesn't mean that I hate the guy. Doesn't mean I have any problems with him at all. Just because he doesn't really appeal to me, doesn't mean that I don't think he should be a top star in the WWE. I believe on, in fact, in multiple instances, on multiple occasions, I have asserted that he is a top guy for the WWE, and I've been saying this for a couple of years now, I believe. So I don't understand where, again, I got this whole notion about me that I hate Daniel Bryan. I don't hate Daniel Bryan. Frankly, in today's WWE, as lacking as this company is for stars, they need anybody that can elicit the proper type of freaking reaction. And no, John Cena and the crap that he gets week in and week out is not the proper type of reaction, no matter how many sheep or shills for the WWE try to tell you otherwise. Daniel Bryan gets one of the purest, babyface, good guy reactions that that company has had in quite some time. And it's something they badly and desperately need. And on the road to WrestleMania 31, where so many of you seem to be just content with Daniel Bryan playing second fiddle, not only on the show itself, but even in the match that he was going to be involved with, I believe it was me that was saying, no, this is bullshit. The guy that for months was talking about he would have Daniel Bryan wrestle Seth Rollins and actually beat Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 31. I'm the one that was sitting there and saying, this is bullshit. You should expect better for Daniel Bryan and you should demand better for Daniel Bryan. But again, I'm the one that hates on Daniel Bryan. I'm the one that doesn't like Daniel Bryan. Just because I point out some things that are clearly evident to me pertaining to Daniel Bryan, and in particular how his character is utilized by the WWE, doesn't mean that I hate the guy. And with all of this said, I have to ask this question seriously. What the hell is WWE doing with Daniel Bryan? It's one thing that you brought him back for the Royal Rumble, and then treated him like an afterthought. You know, why bring him back just to do that? And then you put him in a situation where he's just sitting there trying to help out Roman Reigns and put over Roman Reigns at a time where you need to really kind of establish Daniel Bryan, frankly. And then you get to the point where now that you've had him put over Roman Reigns at Fastlane, you don't really know what the fuck you're going to do with Daniel Bryan. So instead of featuring him like the top guy that he is, you sit there and throw him into this schmoz of an IC title ladder match where, again, there was more emphasis and focus placed upon our truth, our truth, than Daniel Bryan. So, of course, you get to WrestleMania 31, and there it is. Everybody gets sucked into the bullshit because it was a ladder match with some spots, even though the match itself was kind of mediocre and average. And Daniel Bryan wins, so that instantly makes everything all great and awesome. Well, no, the fuck it doesn't. Because, as I talked about shortly after WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan is going to be a forgettable IC champion. And everything that I've seen heading into WrestleMania, at WrestleMania, and now post-WrestleMania, indicates to me that I'm going to be 100% correct about this, regardless of what you want to think about it. Newsflash, just because you like the guy, doesn't mean that everything that he's involved with is freaking star-spangled awesome. There are many things about Hogan's career and many pieces of his work that I don't particularly care for, pretty much everything involving The Undertaker being the American badass I despise, but everything with Daniel Bryan just has to be freaking awesome. No, it doesn't, because everything they've done with Daniel Bryan to me post-WrestleMania 31 has been bullshit.
Now, don't give me this excuse of, oh, he's got the neck problems and they're trying to protect him and that's why they're not featuring so much. If you had those concerns now, you probably had those concerns a couple of weeks ago. Henceforth, why the fuck did you put the belt on Daniel Bryan to begin with? Now, you went there. You made that decision. Don't give me this bullshit that you can't feature this guy like a star, that you can't feature this guy like he freaking matters because he's hurt. I remember years back, Austin broke his freaking neck at SummerSlam, and he did some of his best work ever, and the whole build-up to him coming back to full-time active competition. There are so many freaking things you can do with Daniel Bryan that doesn't involve him having to wrestle a match that would actually make the IC title mean more but they don't freaking do it. I mean, for Christ's sakes, Daniel Bryan was utilized this particular week on Raw to advance a storyline involving Kane. And that was it. A short, crappy backstage pre-tape for your Intercontinental Champion. If this was how you were going to feature Daniel Bryan, then why didn't you just freaking make Luke Harper the IC Champion again at WrestleMania? Because at least it looks like he has some type of real story with Dean Ambrose heading into Extreme Rules. I mean, seriously. Why would the WWE make this guy their IC champion with part of the purpose being they want to raise the prestige and the profile of the freaking belts if they're going to go out of their way to feature him as a second tier type of second fiddle talent? Why in the hell would you do that? The WWE knew what the fuck they were doing this week in London. They intentionally didn't bring out Daniel Bryan for something big. They intentionally threw him into that half ass backstage pre-tape segment because they knew the type of reaction that Daniel Bryan would get and they didn't want that on their television. And you'll be damned to prove to me that anything other than that was clearly the case. Don't give me this spin about injuries. Don't give me spin about this bullshit. The WWE intentionally tries to hold this guy back. And while I've said before that I don't believe he should be the number one guy in the company, I don't think this is a way that you should treat one of your top three to five guys in your freaking company on your freaking roster and to me beyond question he is one of your top five or top three guys on your entire freaking roster and you are using him as a plot device for Kane and his internal struggle Kane if you're going to treat the IC champion namely a guy like Daniel Bryan like he doesn't freaking matter, then you might as well take that belt that doesn't freaking matter and put it on a guy that doesn't freaking matter. Part of the purpose of putting that belt on Daniel Bryan is to make him matter and to make that title matter and the people that he feuds with and work with freaking matter. For Christ's sakes, on this week's Raw, Fandango, who jobbed in short order, was more strongly and prominently featured than Daniel freaking Bryan your intercontinental champion. Please do not tell me this is good. Please do not tell me this is anything other than incredible bullshit. And I know I'll get some of you wise asses that'll sit there and say, well, they're featuring him on SmackDown and whoop de woo So the guy isn't featured on Raw at all. So we put him on the second tier show that gets half of the audience and that's supposed to make his title reign mean something. That's supposed to be significant. No, again, it's making his title reign forgettable. There are lots of people like me who watch Raw that don't watch freaking SmackDown. And sitting there and making your case by saying that they're building their B show around Daniel Bryan being the IC champion isn't the way to go. It isn't the way to make a good case for Daniel Bryan being anything other than a forgettable intercontinental champion. Because he clearly is going to be. For Christ's sakes, I even had to look to realize that he's facing Wade Barrett at Extreme Rules. And hell, based off of the way things are trending, they might have Wade Barrett freaking beat him. You're making him the featured attraction of your B-show that half of your Raw audience watches. And that's a good thing? No, that's not okay. That's bullshit. Fandango was featured more on Raw than Daniel Bryan. Does that not ring any alarm bells to anybody? They didn't even want him to make an actual entrance on Raw because they knew the type of entrance he was going to have and the reaction that that was going to garner. And henceforth, as a result, the WWE wanted to make sure that that didn't fucking happen.
They're making Daniel Bryan out to be so much less than what he could be. They're making Daniel Bryan out to be just another forgettable IC champion, which I tried to tell you is exactly what the hell they were going to do, because if you couldn't see this was going to happen before WrestleMania 31, and you can't see it's happening now, I don't know what the fuck is ever going to convince you otherwise. What the fuck is the WWE doing? You have these titles, these props, for a reason. They are there to make stars, to elevate stars, to help build new talents. All of these things that Daniel Bryan can help accomplish, but based off of the way of you're featuring him, he will do nothing. Putting him in crappy six-man tags and repetitive, overdone, thrown together in the middle of the show with no real featuring matches with Dolph Ziggler, News Flash, Ding Dong, Dumb Dicks, ain't getting the job done for any fucking buddy. It's ridiculous what the WWE was doing with Daniel Bryan. It's ridiculous that they would go out of their way to try and sabotage him as IC champion. Why the fuck would you put the belt on the guy if you're going to treat him like this? Why the fuck would you going to put the belt on the guy knowing that you had these injury concerns before and this most certainly can't be some type of new phenomenon? So this calls into question WWE's decision making and their intelligence. But now you put the belt on him, so fucking do something with him. And no, just having fucking matches every week isn't telling a goddamn story. That's not doing anything different other than the same type of forgettable bullshit that this company has done with the IC title for freaking years. And again, I will emphasize, this is how much Daniel Bryan means to the WWE. And this is what the WWE thinks of him as IC champion. They used him in a crappy backstage pre-tape to advance an internal struggle with Kane and Fandango got more run and more play and more emphasis and focus and attention on this week's Raw than the guy that main evented WrestleMania 30 that is now the IC champion. What the fuck is the WWE doing with Daniel Bryan? I'll tell you. Trying to intentionally sabotage him. Making sure that he clearly plays second fiddle to the almighty U.S. champion John Cena. If you can't see that's happening... Then I don't know what the fuck else to tell you. You can believe all the pro-Daniel Bryan bullshit you want to, but you should be outraged about this. You should be upset about this because Daniel Bryan has earned better. He merits better. He deserves better. And frankly, you as Daniel Bryan and WWE and wrestling fans, you deserve better too. What the fuck is the WWE doing? A bunch of bullshit with Daniel Bryan, period.